I'd like to give you a quick tour of SkyCharts Pro for the Apple iPad. SkyCharts lets you use your iPad as an electronic flight bag. For today's demonstration, we'll be using a non-3G Wi-Fi only iPad with 32 gigabytes of storage. With Wi-Fi enabled, SkyCharts is able to get a rough idea of its location and it can display an aircraft symbol on the map. In the air with Wi-Fi disabled, there would be no geo-referencing on any chart. To scroll around the chart, use the simple gestures you're used to from an iPhone or an iPod Touch. Zoom in, zoom out. Three types of charts are supported. This is a VFR terminal area chart, but if I tap in the upper left corner, I can display a VFR sectional. Tap again, and I can display a low-altitude IFR in-route chart. High-altitude in-route charts are currently not supported. To cache charts so you can access them in flight without a Wi-Fi connection, simply tap on the Information button in the lower right corner. Here I can see all of the low-altitude IFR in-route charts that are available, the green check mark indicating the ones that I've cached. The same procedure follows for terminal area charts or VFR charts. Display the chart type you'd like to cache, press the information button, and you'll see all the charts available. The green check mark indicating what's been cached and is available for use in flight. Once a chart has been cached, all the airport information for all airports contained in that chart will also be cached. This allows you to access that information when no Wi-Fi is available, such as during flight. Simply double tap on an airport symbol and you'll see available information including the airport facility directory, takeoff minima, arrival procedures, instrument approach procedures, the airport diagram, and departure procedures. The direct key in the lower left corner gives you access to a simple flight planning feature. Enter a departure airport, VORs, waypoints, and a destination airport with an optional true airspeed and fuel burn. I'll enter a simple flight plan that's commonly assigned for IFR flights between Oakland, California and Santa Rosa. Press search and you'll see a simple navigation log appear. Remember that these numbers do not include your particular aircraft's time or fuel to climb, nor are winds aloft calculations included. But this should give you a rough idea for planning purposes. Tap on map and you'll see your course line appear in magenta. Using sky charts in flight is easy. On the ground at Oakland, I'd simply double tap, display the airport diagram, and once I've received my clearance and I'm ready to taxi, I can refer to this diagram. Once I'm ready for departure, I can return to the in route map and reference it during my flight. During the in route portion, if I decide I want information on a different airport, it's only a tap away. Approaching my destination, I can access the instrument approach procedure that I intend to fly. And once I've landed, bring up the airport diagram to help me find my way to my parking spot. There are some limitations to sky charts. Consider this terminal area chart of the New York area. A paper chart contains extra information not available. Specifically, information on the back side of the terminal area chart is not available in sky charts. The Los Angeles terminal area chart does preserve some information. Scroll to the edge, you'll see the preferred VFR class Bravo transitions, as well as information on the special flight rules area. 
Another limitation involves special use airspace. In a future release of SkyCharts, I'd like to see the ability to double tap on a restricted area or MOA and then see information about altitudes, times of use, and the frequencies for the controlling agencies displayed. To ensure that our iPad doesn't interfere with communication or navigational equipment, go to the Settings section and be sure to turn off Wi-Fi before flying. You can also go to the General section and make sure that Bluetooth is disabled. I hope you've enjoyed this quick tour of SkyCharts Pro for the Apple iPad. Until next time, this is John Ewing of Aviation Mentor, wishing you a safe flight.